So this uh, problem has a two-way contingency table. I have one contingency table and then followed by a bunch of probability questions. I try to think of all the possible uh, questions so that makes this problem very comprehensive so let's take a look at the description there are 1000 students finished a differential calculus class in a spring semester the course grade and the weekly duty weekly study hours are recorded in the following table so for example out of a thousand students 12 students spend 0 to 12 hour wait, wait, 0 to 0 to 2, right? This is definitely a typo. 0 to 2, which is here. 0 to 2 hours study weekly and earn a B. In this course, we choose one student from this class randomly, answer the following question. So we have a few keywords to go over. So the first one is joint frequency. So these numbers are all are joint frequency. The 12 students is right here. We call them a joint frequency because the 12 corresponds to a core square and the number of hours these 12 people spend study every week. So these numbers are joint frequency because every number in this box corresponds to two status, a core square and the hours, all right? And then let's take a look at row total. So row total, uh, zero to two is a row. So this row has a row total. You add up these five numbers, you get a row total. So this row, add up these numbers, you get a row total. So these are the row total, and there are four row total. And then column total, so column total, so we have this column, there is a total, add this number up, you get a total, add this number up, you get a total. So they are column total, and there are five column total. And then uh, the table total, so we have 1,000 students in this study that is called the table total, another name is called the grand total. All right, so let's erase the circle. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to copy this problem because um, later on, as we scroll down, I will just paste the prop, paste the table, so we don't need to uh, scroll up to look at the table again. So I have a bunch of probability questions uh, because we will move down as we move on. So you will have, you may want to take a screenshot right now, so you don't need to keep going back to the beginning of video to check out the questions. So the first question is find the probability that this student receive a B in this course. So that is the total number of B, which is a column total, second column, 472 divided by the grand total. That is equals to 0 0.472. Total number of B divided by the grand total. And then part B, how many D? The, uh, I mean, the probability of D, how many people got a D? 35, right? divided by this grand total. So that is equals to 0 0.035. How many people study five to six hours weekly? C, probability, five to six. How many people? That would be the third row, right? You look all the way to the right, the row total is 286. You take that divided by the grand total, 0 0.286. Simple, right? You just pick up numbers from the table. And then part D is a study zero to two hours. So that would be the first row, probability zero to two. First row all the way to the right, you have a 69 divided by 1000. That is 0 0.069. All right, these are all the single events, right? Okay, so starting in part E, we have a compound event. So in part E, we have a earn an A, probability earn an A, and this symbol means N, study seven to eight hours weekly, seven to eight. So how do you answer an N probability? So when you see the word N, you have to look for a joint frequency, all right? Joint frequency, which joint frequency corresponds to A and seven to eight? So that will be col column one, all the way down to seven and eight. So that will be 280, right? That corresponds to grade A and seven to eight hours. So that will be 280 goes to the top and then the grand total goes to the denominator that equals to 0 0.280. That's how easy it is. You just pick a number from the, uh, from the joint frequency. And then F, oh, looks like we are not done with E. So they want me to change the N to an OR, so that will be 
A or 7 to 8. So that would be using the inclusion exclusion principle. That is A plus 7 to 8 minus the probability of both. Both means the n. So A itself is uh, how many A? 400, right? Divided by 1000 and then plus 7 to 8. Uh, fourth row all the way to the right 590 divided by a thousand and then minus both we just found that that is 280 divided by a thousand so you take uh you have a 400 plus 500 right so you have a 990 minus 280 that is equals to 710 divided by a thousand before i approximate that make sure when you solve an or all three fractions have the same denominator, all right? So 710 divided by that, 0 0.710. So that is part E, and then we have part F. So part F is are the two events earn an A and study seven to eight hours weekly independent or dependent. So these two events, so looks like we continue in part E, are they independent? Then you have to prove that the probability of A and 7 to A is equal to the probability of A times the probability of 7 to A. A and B is equal to A times B. If that is true, then they are independent. So the N probability, we found it. So 280 divided by 1000. Probability of A is equal to, we found that in the previous part, 400 divided by 100 and then 7 to 8 itself we found that 2 that is a 590 divided by a thousand not a hundred so this is 0 0.280 and then that will be a uh, the product of 400 times 590 divided by the product of 1000 times itself so the right hand side is equals to 0 0.236. They are not equal. Not equal means they are dependent. Not equal means dependent. Dependent means not independent. So that is a solid proof. And then the we answer all part E. Yes, we do. Oh, actually, this is not part E. This is F. It's a continuation of E. So this is part F. Did we answer the, the entire part F? Yes, we do. Oh, not yet, not yet. Are they mutually exclusive? Are they? The answer is written right there. Are they mutually exclusive? So this, this probability, is this equals to zero? The answer is no, right? So this is not equal to zero so that means they share 280 students in common these two events they share 280 people in common so they are not mutually exclusive <laughs> let's take a look again did we answer the entire part f yep we do and then starting in part g looks like we have to uh come down and then um paste the table Oh, let's paste the question too. Because the question is pretty long. Paste. Perfect. So Park G, the probability that these students study seven to eight hours weekly and receive a D. And we have an N. So Park G. So Park G is a probability seven to eight N got a D, so that will be a joint frequency, right? 7 to 8 and got a D, so that will be a 0 divided by a 1,000, that is equals to 0. So since that is equals to 0, that means they are mutually exclusive. So that means these two events are mutually exclusive. Yes, I am answering the question, are they independent? Let's check. Again, mutually exclusive and independent, they are not related at all. They are two separate problems. You, you cannot say one implies the other. They don't imply each other. Mutually exclusive is mutually exclusive. Independent is independent. Two different topics, all right? 
seven to eight and d is that equal to i don't know seven to eight times the probability of d so the n we got it the seven to eight uh, that is 590 divided by a thousand how many d's do we have 35 divided by a thousand the math is so simple zero cannot be equal to the right hand side so they are not equal then they are not independent that means they are dependent yep answer the whole question and then part h student earn a c given a student earn a c so probability that is part h given that person earn a c find the probability that this person study five to six hours weekly so I, this is you already know right i know that is a c that means you put the total number of c in the denominator 63 so 63 is column three we are locked down in column three within column three how many five to six that will be uh 23 so this will be uh 23 divided by 63 that is approximately equal to 0 0.3651 did I answer the whole question? Based on the same given condition, find 7 to 8. All right. 7 to 8, given C. Okay, we are locked down in C once again within this column, C column. How many are 7 to 8? Zero. So that is equals to zero. Suppose, suppose means given. So part I. So part I given suppose 3 to 4 5 B okay how many 3 to 4 3 to 4 is row 2 the total is 55 so we are locked down in row 2 within row 2 there are 0 B so that is equal to 0 and then uh, do one more 5 F given 3 to 4 right? based on the same given so 3 to 4 that is 55 the F is a uh, column 5. We are locked down in 3 to 4 is row 2. You lock yourself in row 2. And then within row 2, 4 corresponds to F. So you have 4 divided by 55. That is approximately equal to 0 0.0727. Did I answer the whole question? Yep, I do. So that will be the end of this video. If you think that is helpful, please subscribe like and share this for me i try my the best i can to include all the possible questions that i can think of based on this big contingency table so um i will see you all in the next lesson signing out